Now, back in May of 2020, just a few months into the pandemic, the UN High Commissioner of Human Rights delivered what was actually a surprising warning. When we restrict certain human rights because of a need like a natural cause or a pandemic like this one, it has to be, first of all, it has to be a clear need, it has to be proportionate to the need, and it has to have a time bound. It cannot be forever. We have seen that some governments are using it to uh, shrink, to make even more shrink their civic space and the possibility of civil society to express, and that is unacceptable. The Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen and support law enforcement agencies at all levels across the country. This is about keeping Canadians safe. These tools include strengthening their ability to impose fines or imprisonment. Financial institutions will be authorized or directed to render essential services to help address the situation by regulating and prohibiting the use of property to fund or support illegal blockades. This was never about the virus. It was about creating a compliant public, a, a, a compliant public that was kind of primed to obey the next lockdown order, no questions asked. The assaults on our basic liberties have been wide ranging. School closures denied children quality education. That was the freedom to learn. Vax and max, uh, vask, vax and mask mandates deprived us of our freedom to decide what we put into our own bodies. Stay-at-home orders destroyed small businesses while large corporations thrived. That was our freedom to work. Then big tech censorship, where YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, they acted as proxy speech police for the government, our freedom of expression. They're so frantic that they're trying to stigmatize the word freedom. In other words, your freedom kills people even when they're vaccinated. I love how people talk about personal freedom. If you're exercising personal freedom, freedom puts someone else in jeopardy, their health in jeopardy. I don't consider that being very dealing with freedom. Two things that concern me. One are those who just try to make this a political issue. Freedom. I have the freedom to kill you with my COVID. No, I mean, come on, freedom. Never heard a president, never thought I would hear a president say something like that. And the media picks it up and then repeats it with their own lame flourish. Now the message is to be afraid of those who want freedom. What you've seen in, 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 uh, in Canada is others are fearful of these protesters who are arguing for freedom. Now it's sort of generically anti-government, all wrapped in this sort of notion or the guise of freedom, you know, whatever that means to these individuals. But freedom for the rest of you to do and speak your mind? No, nah, they don't want that. Here's the way the progs at the CBC describe the word. It's malleable and a term that thrives among far-right groups. 